marriage is doable. Marriage works. And it only works when it is worked on. Can you look at your spouse and tell them marriage works, but it must be worked on. I know there are papers, there are papers, there are papers there right there on your table. I know we would be doing an exercise. We'll be doing an exercise at some point uh, so that we try and do things that mumehepa kufanyia uko home. Unajua zile vitu naambiaga mzee nataka tuonane tuongea na kuja saa sita. Ama saa hizo ndio ametengeneza kesha yake ya church. <laughs> kesha yake ya church. Basi anafikiria ni vile anampenda Mungu kumbe amehepa engagement eh? eh? Ame, ni kuhepa amehepa. Alafu akiingia asubuhi anakaa kiroho kiroho. Anajipikisha chai tu hapo na madina hapo as a way of saying ya kushe, ya kushe tuendele. <laughs> eh? Ya kushe tuendelee la maisha. I want to speak to us nine habits that will grow a healthy relationship. Nine habits that will grow a healthy relationship. Now, everyone getting married have this one desire to have a marriage like what we see in Hollywood. We have a desire to have the fairy tale with endless love. You know, when you look at that girl when you're getting married, when you look at that young man when you're getting married, uh, you envisage a life whereby his kisses from morning to evening. Yani ni bana ashwe sana. Eh? Ni kupinduana tu pale mna pinduana tu pale mukifrayaga matunda ya bana na kazi ya mikono ya Yehova. <laughs> but you know what? Most of us do not prepare for a successful and a healthy marriage. There are few things that uh, we don't prepare for in life, and it is amazing. The things that we don't prepare in life for are the most powerful things that we really need to prepare for in life. And I must appreciate our Pastor Ruth uh, for being able to consolidate you guys, the young people, and the pastor away from the U.S. It's such a great thing that you can be able to gather here together as, as couples and enjoy. Imagine, pastia for U.S. na meweza kupanga mkutano, you know, si wavijana, mkutano, you know, for us now, 29 years, tuata tukisema vijana na kaka ni meyuthi. But she's been able to organize this, of course, with the oversight of the senior, of the senior pastor, but do you know what? Not many churches, Pastor Ruth, are investing in marriages, and for that, you know, when she called me and she told me she would want me to come and speak together with my husband, I told her, I congratulate you. I said that severally, because not even many pastors' wives would uh, be able to dare do this kind of a thing. Wamewachia mzee jobo. Jameni yes, to begin with Pastor Ruth Makofi. It's so mothery of her to think about us and uh, our marriages. What was I saying? And we really appreciate. Thank you so much, Mama, for the opportunity. We are neighbors. By the way, we came from the same county, Nakuru. We have a good history together. Wana ashwe sana. So, even in our own personal lives, rarely do we prepare for relationship. What to wanafikiria mapenzi ni mapenzi. Unasikia tu zile maoxytoxin zinaenda juu. Those hormones are rising and you feel like, I heard somebody says, as we don't talk about it, we do it. <laughs> You're not alone. You're not alone. Africans don't talk about it. They do it. That's how manual we are. <laughs> <laughs> Most of us do not prepare. We don't prepare for relationships. Instead, we just fall in love and no wonder we fall out of love. Mukiona, muko ju kabisa. I look at young people when they're getting married. You know, unakanyanga, unarudi nyuma, unaenda mbele. Yani uko tu pale na Mombasa na miavuli kanisani. And you look at the investment of that wedding and you discover most of us do not invest in healthy relationships. Most of us do not invest in our marriage. We invest in the wedding. You try to tell young people to pay for cremarito counseling when they are doing the wedding, they would rather over budget for 500 people 
juu ya maono kubwa and then 200 come for the wedding and then the other people are carrying food from that wedding because there was an over budgeting and lack of proper priorities on whether to invest in the marriage or whether to invest in the wedding most of us really prepare on how to take care of our children parenting you call married people to come for parenting courses mtu ataki yeah, nataka tuka kichomoka hivi kame kama maindi. Until when they are hitting teenage and you discover, wow, this child needs help. And not only the child, the mother needs help, atatuwa. So that is when now you start taking the child to the pastor. Pastor muongeleshe, ama unanza kutafuta teenage classes. Most of us rarely prepare for that which is important in our lives. And why is it some people have got very good marriages and others do not have good marriages? Does it mean that others are lucky than the others? What is the different thing that people are doing in their marriages that you have some that are enjoying and we have some that are struggling? And let me say this, Noah haina kiroho, there must be work that must be done. Unajua ndoa za wa Kristo ndiyo zinaporomoka hata kuliko za watu wa dunia. Kwa sababu, we are assuming the Holy Ghost is going to do your work. But remember, uh, God chose a wife for only one man, Adam. He has never chosen a wife for anyone else. And the first man that he chose a wife for complained. He said, it is this woman that you gave to me. Until then, God decided, when it comes to choosing a loved one, kazi yako. Fungua macho vizuri, angalia ile kitu ngetaka kukana ee, baka ukizeeka. You know, look at somebody who would talk the way you want to talk, somebody who you're okay, whether they cry overnight. It's your own personal choice. The amazing thing that we have today is that we are divorcing at a young age while still our parents are married. Nowadays, it is becoming like an easy norm for the church to be so sensitive and conscious of the single moms and the single dads because the numbers are rising then we want to emphasize on the marriage. We are in a perverted world, and we are in a world whereby it is thought like marriage does not work. Now, if our marriages are going to work, then there are things that we need to adopt as, has, uh, as habits. Relationship can break your heart. Wacha ni kuambie, unawana wa mstiana mnacheka na ee, aneza fanya wakote makaratasi. <laughs> that guy can make you mad that guy can make you mad don't assume one another there is nothing powerful like the emotion of love that is why we see people killing that is why we see people divorcing that is why we see people violently handling one another why because there is no emotion that is so powerful like this emotion that is called love and this emotion that is called love is one of the emotions that many of us have assumed when it comes to investing in it. Now, what are these strong habits that I'm talking about that we need to adopt? Because unless we are intentional in building a strong relationship, it does not happen by osmosis. Let me say this. Even a pastor cannot pray for you. Receive, receive, receive a healthy marriage. No, you have to work for a healthy marriage. Number one habit, make your marriage relationship a priority. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter number 13 and verse number 4, uh, marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled, but fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. Marriage is honorable. It needs to be respected. It needs to be given priority. It needs to be invested in. And because marriage is honorable, the Bible says, let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. Can you imagine that scripture has come immediately after marriage is honorable so that means what is it that is ravaging our marriages it's covetousness we have wrong priorities you want to have a success 
kind of a life so you are busy chasing success you are busy chasing a fame you are busy chasing recognition and you have forgotten to chase after your spouse so what happens after you have gathered all the wealth from all over you come back home and you have no one to celebrate with na unamuliza hivi tu yote nimefanya hamuoni si ati atuoni ile kitu tunataka ni wewe sio vitu bana asifiwe sana let me tell you genuine women want their husbands more than the money they can bring in the house wale wa mama wa kora ndio wanatafuta kile ambacho kiko katika mfuko but a genuine woman would rather have a husband in the house wa kule ugali sukuma rather than taking a whole chicken in a hotel Let me tell you if you see a woman taking a whole chicken or half a chicken in a hotel it's not a wife wives would want to go with the chicken at home because they know he tutapika mara tatu their value systems their priorities are totally <laughs> We miss out on investing in our marriages because we want to invest in a lot of property we want to become wealthy we are fighting ile umaskini uliona na baba yako unaipigana nayo kufa kupona and when you have gathered everything my friend you have no attachment with the children you have no attachment with your own a wife or with your own husband for the ladies maybe you are pursuing this kind of a recognition to have a masters to have a phd so that you can say whatever a man can do a woman can do better but when you come back at home unapata watoto wameharibika unapata the relationship has been broken why because if there is anything that destroy our marriages it's covetousness it's covetousness Why should you come home with a million? Na ulale, mumeangaliana. Kando kando, you are hugging pillows and hugging the edges of the bed because you cannot be able to talk together, but you have a good deposit and a balance in your bank. You see what covetousness do? Let me tell you, money, money will never be enough. Money will never be enough. Look at the rich people, they are still hunting for money. When you look at our politicians, what don't they have? What are they fighting for? But you know what money ni kama moto wa kichaka you know when you ravage this you want more you want more but as you pursue money and covetousness what happens you lose the feeling of love you lose the feeling of empathy and connection with people and you lose the heart of gratitude there is nothing that makes us arrogant like the spirit of covetousness so and that's where you start singing songs like hamujui ni mimi nalipaka school fees so what else did you expect hamujui ni mimi nafanya kwa sababu gani if you do not seek for wealth from a contented heart one of the things that you bring to yourself is the piercing of your heart and causing yourself a lot of sorrows bara ashwe sana You numb your feelings. Money has a way of numbing your feelings. But one of the feelings that money can never numb is the feeling of anger, is the feeling of bitterness, is those kind of demonic spirits that are within the line of covetousness. But let me tell you, contentment and godliness is a great gain. If we are going to have a healthy marriage relationship, it's of a paramount importance that we honor marriage. Maandiko inasema na ndoa ihe Najua watu wanapenda hapo pengine na kitanda kikae kikiwa kitakatifu lakini kama kitanda kitakaa kikiwa kitakatifu lazima kwanza ndoa because it is in the honoring of the marriage that you choose to invest in yourself you choose to invest in your communication skills you choose to invest in your intimate and love and affection uh, skills but when you do not honor and value marriage unatambua kwamba even affection is a problem Unarukia mama kama mtu anaruka juu ya pikipiki. Habit number 2. Eh? Habit number 2. Track 
practice activities that increases your oxytocin. Eh. Yeah. Oxy <laughs> oxytocin is a hormone that is responsible for love. It's the hormone that sends signals of affection. It's the hormone that causes arousal. Yani mambo inajipeleka tu yenyewe baada ya kungangana kama mnacheza futi, eh? Mnatafutana kwa kitanda usiku na Practice activities that increase your oxytocin. Communicate in a manner that increases this hormone. Eh? <laughs> Communicate in a lovely language. How have you been? How was your day? How I long to come back home. I have missed you. It has been such a long day without you. Eh? Some of us get in our own homes like a watchman. Una ingia ni kama. Akuja piku. Maintain eye contact. There is something powerful about eye contact. There is something powerful about eye contact. When you look at somebody for a long time, you do not connect with them with your brain, you connect with them with your heart. I want you to sit next to your spouse and I want you to look at one another for a long time. You connect. <laughs> you connect. <laughs> Let's agree. If you have any conflict that you have not resolved, tafadhali for once, you make a candle kidogo so that you can be able to face one another. <laughs> you know the, the mystery, the mystery, mutasimama kwa sababu ni mwana wa mku angali, wengine waku angaliana, na nataka tuku wasaidia, ndiyo kama mlikuja kama mskizani, angalao, Hii couples meeting is I matunda. Sini kweli? Yeah. Sini kweli? Yeah. There are things we don't do in church and uh, how, you know, bad would it be if we cannot do it in a couples meeting? Dear go personal. Dear go personal. Concentrate na mtu wako. Dear go personal. Eh? Usingie kwa nyumba and you are saying, eh, na leo ni kusafi. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Somebody has worked on that cleanliness. Go personal. <laughs> Oh, sometimes food has been presented and it is good food and it's your own house so you know you have only one woman who is in charge of the kitchen and you are there saying hey apa watu wanapikaka vizuri si watu it is you mwambie njeri go personal njeri jameni i like the way you do your chapatis yes go Personal. Communicate through the heart and not through your head. I want us to stand and see what would happen if we activated the hormone oxytocin within this environment. So I want us to stand. I want you to look at each other. Macho kwa macho. Eye contact. I want you to look at each other macho kwa macho and I want you to hold one another. I would want you to hold one another and hold one another for long and look at each other macho kwa macho. Yeah, macho kwa macho. Siseni muhagiane, nataka muangaliane. Waze. Men, men, don't go before us. Men, don't go before us. I know, I know. <laughs> well, was it? Don't go before us unless you are that boda boda guy who jumps. <laughs> ah, okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. You can get seated. <laughs> ah, I will not call for 
a nota call. I will not call for a nota call. But one of the things I keep on advising ladies, do not believe in anything your husband tells you when he is on top of you. <laughs> He's not himself. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's under the influence of oxytocin. <laughs> Habit number three. Habit number three. So, ukisikia umepromisiwa vitu mingi, ujue eh hayuko. Goja, goja a sober up. I love you can revisit the more Kenya and see whether what he was saying is what he meant. Number three habit. Practice gratitude meditation. Practice gratitude meditation. Gratitude is key to happiness in marriage. Actually, did you know that in gratitude is a demonic spirit that is so arrogant and believes it can be able to do on itself without the others? So practice gratitude meditation. One of the things uh, when we sharply disagree with my husband, if I want to bring myself back to him before he brings himself back to me, I'll start thinking about the things he has done. Zile mzuri. Nangalia ki uja mame jaribu. Imagine. He has taken us to all the parks in Kenya. And not because he has come from a rich family. It is just out of a commitment of exposing his own family. So I start thinking about the good things. I will remember. I never wanted to go to the US. I was born up in a slum. And I didn't think it is anything doable. But he kept on pushing me for my passport, taking me outside. Nowadays, I enjoy going holiday out of the country. So I start meditating on the good things that he's been able to do and the things he has sacrificed for us. And I am more drawn back to him. And we are drawn back to each other if you focus on the good things. Now, one of the things we agreed with my husband when we got married, hata kama tumekasirishana, tutaoka pamoja. Tutaoka pamoja. So kuna wakati tunasuguwana tu, munasuguwana tu kule na muongei, lakini... <laughs> you need to come up with ground rules that even when you have disagreed there is a way you make inroads to one another and let me tell you it works for us we are not talking but let me tell you you can imagine iyo iyo kusuguana inamaliziaka wapi wala ashwe sana so ata kama mulikuwa na maneno mingi ya kuongea inaishia wapi <laughs> Psalms 104, the Bible says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love unto us. Even in the gates of that girl, get in there with thanksgiving in your, <laughs> in your heart. But I swear, Sana. But I see few. Maniangaliaje. <laughs> Number four. <laughs> Number four. Talk about. <laughs> Number four. Number four habits. Number four habits. Talk about your marriage fears. What is it that you fear in your marriage? Talk about them. Write them down. Take on those giants that you fear in your marriage. Come on, ogopa siku moja utakuja kuachwa. Talk about it. Umulize. Mbona nona kama utakuja kuniwacha kwa mama? Mbona nona kama utakuja kuniwacha kwa kwa mata? Talk about those fears so that you clear the air. Uh, you know, anywhere there is fear, there is no 100% investment into the relationship. So, kila mtu anagonga na 20, uwe anagonga 30, anategea naono uwe analeta ngapi hivi. So, mnakaa mkitegea naga without knowing the years are going. Inafika 15 years, mumekaa pamoja, but you wasted your time because you are not able to trust each other. Why? You could not be able to put your fears on the table. Put your fears on the table. 
If you don't have a child, you are two years into marriage, three years into marriage. Apa na nyamaza atunakau kiyogopa nani anataka kwen nani anastari kwenda kuona daktari? Is is it her who is going to the gyno? Tunaenda wawili ama ende kwanza? Talk about it, bana. I kitu tumegonga mara kaza na mtoto akuji. Where is the problem? Talk about your. <laughs> To, <laughs> when you are able to engage in your fears, you are able to deal with your giants. Are we together? Do you know when you talk about your fears, you eliminate external interference? You eliminate external interference. So when people are, talk, are, are talking out there, oh, I want a mtoto, I'm a mother, I know, I'm a uliza, I'm a mother, I'm a mother, I'm a mother, I'm a mother, I'm a mother. So long as you've been able to handle the fears, you are a team. And even when he asks, she asks those questions or they ask those questions, you answer like you are answering for a team because it is not something you have not been able to tackle. A couple that has giants in their marriage that they fear is an easy couple for people to, be, to come in between. If you have the fears that your husband may be seeing another lady and casting longing eyes, or maybe you have fears that maybe you can job Mama ukimwacha unamwacha na kona ma engage mingine settle those fears down. Mbona nafikiria kama una ni double deal? Yeah. Talk about the fears. The challenge of Christian is uh, spiritualizing everything. Yaani wewe unatokea tu alter call zote. Hata pastor Juwagi ni gani unatokea na shida yako ni gani? Lakini But it's because there are giants, there are fears that you have not been able to take on. Attack your fears as early as possible. Does that help? Nasaidika. Number five. Heighten. Ata kama unona kuna jamaa, anasalimia bibi yako sana, na unaogopa muambia by the way. Mini meangalia vile, onyango anakusalimia, salimia, and I'm now getting concerned. I know he's my friend, but I am now getting... Na mama, you know, akikwambia I'm getting concerned, don't become personal. Mwambi, just get to know, by the way, what is it that is making you feel concerned? What is it that I need to do differently? Are we together? If you fear that uh, your wife dresses funny when they are going out on their own, and when you are going together with them, and for that, for that, Evie, you know, kihap hazard hivi. Just talk it out. And uh, what do you dress for? Because I think when we are going together, you're not as sensitive in your dressing like you are when you are going on your... Deal with those fears. Heighten your curiosity rather than being stuck in criticism. Number five, heighten your curiosity. Ask questions. Don't criticize. Ana sikuizu ni meona mimi siyo priority. Umeweka watoto mbele kuniliko. Ask. <laughs> Why is it that I am feeling I'm not a priority and it seems that your focus iko kwa iko kwa watoto. Heighten your curiosity, you know, rather than being stuck in criticism. How do you behave when you're stuck in criticism? Uh you pull it on your own side. It is on your own end. Sikuizi ya muoni umana wangu. Yani sikuizi sinamana kwa hii nyumba. And that's how you talk when you're pulling on. But you know, the different way of heightening your curiosity is, by the way, I am feeling like I am forgotten. Is it me who is feeling that way? Or I have been forgotten? And when you ask it that way, you, you get positive answers. But when you ask questions like, Naona, kama mimi ni mesaulika, hii nyumba sina maana tena, then everybody wants to prove their maana. The children also want to prove their worth. The wife want to prove the worth. What have you done? You have pulled out a competition in that house. Rather than expressing your feelings that will bring value and worth even to the others, and holistically as a family, you win together as a team. Does that help? Be curious. Don't be critical. Sini sawa sawa. Be curious. Eh leo umengara kuna kuna 
rather than kwani uko na date ama mzee amekuja ametelewa you are like this is not normal where are you coming this time it's different than when you receive the husband and you are like wow it seems you had a longer day at work share with me what was your experience out there is totally different than criticizing iko hii nyumba unaingiana tu usiku kwani siku hizi uko na shughuli gani unaenda umepitia wapi this helps you get over the hurdle of frustrations of unmet of unmet expectation invest eh invest your time in knowing your spouse rather than in judging them and when your spouse is reaching out to know you don't block them kwani wewe unanionaje you know umeuliza tu swali simple why is it that you look angry umekasirikia hapa kwa nyumba ama umekuja kama umekasirikia i would want to be a support to you can i know am i the source of your mudometers or what is happening wachana na mimi vile umenikuta wachana na mimi <laughs> purpose to be specific purpose to be specific with what you want wadada purpose to be specific hapa na mko na sijui ninasikia aje unauza unasikiaje hata sielewi naumwa na wapi so who is going to <laughs> and then you start complaining you don't care when i am sick but you don't even know where you are sick yourself how would somebody express care unless they are doctors or unless is that guy mwenye walipatana kwa pharmacy mwenye walikutana na akinunua strep steals <laughs> purpose purpose to be specific today's dinner is late is everything okay that's more positive eh hii nyumba tunakunywa na breakfast saa 4 na dinner tunakunywa saa 4 kuna mpango yoyote what is that <laughs> just be specific hmm? are we together uh, <clears throat> avoid judgmental questions mbona una madharau hivi Eh ama mbona <laughs> hauoni kama mimi ni kitu Sasa wewe mwenyewe kama hujaniona wewe ni kitu nani atakuona wewe ni kitu You know at times we reflect our feelings thinking is how the other people are handling us but it's all about our own feelings Habit number six, develop healthy conflict resolution skills be careful and not crushing Remember in conflict resolution you don't expect to win always a loss can be a win in the long run the greatest win you can get in a marriage conflict is winning yourselves to each other the greatest win that you can get in a marriage conflict is winning yourselves to each to each other now when it comes to conflict resolution make sure you set ground rules of how you are going to communicate agree are we communicating ukiwa unasoma ama kama tunaangaliana one on one are you going to be on your phone are you going to be on your laptop how are we going to engage in our communication what are the ground rules are we going to slice and cut each other as we are talking or you're going to wait for your spouse to talk and finish so you need to come up with ground rules you need to come with proper timings you also need to come with proper timings of when to sort out conflict men 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 listen to me men men listen to me the time must be a fixed time it must not be indefinite nilikwambia tutashughulikia hiyo kitu anakuuliza lini hakuna mahali naenda you need to have a fixed time when is it that we are going to deal with this situation give me a timing and when you give a particular timing if you want to build trust because trust is not a fruit of faith make sure eh hapana uliza mke wako mbona uni trust nelewana however however listen however listen there are people who when they struggle with trust they reflect it on their spouses and they want to make the spouses look like they are the ones who are not trustworthy 
So it could be the both sided. Or somebody who is not trustworthy, they think that the other person is doing what they are doing out there. Kwa hivyo, anaanza kukujudge ndani na yeye mwenyewe ndio mkora, uh, anaanza kukujudge ndani. Ati mbona siku hizi unaficha simu? Na yeye mwenyewe ndiye anaficha simu. Remember, problems in marriage. Problems in marriage are created by human beings. Make sure you sort out your problems. It is okay to pray. It is okay to pray, but you need to discuss about the problems. Mnanisikia watu wa Mungu? Ni sawa kuomba lakini pamoja na maombi ketini mfanya nini muongeleshane maandiko inasema hebu tuongeleshane ni our thoughts with one another so that we may heal heal healing comes out of talking about those situations so usijifanye kiroho wakati wa conflict because hii roho alikosea bana asifiwe sana finally finally Bana asifiwe sana. Amen. Recognize that the source of your frustrations mostly is coming from your strengths. Work on how you manage your strengths. Many people do not fight because of their weaknesses. They fight because of their strengths. Make sure you recognize your strengths, you appreciate your strengths and you make sure your strengths are kept in balance. Conflict is as a result of unrecognized strengths, unappreciated strengths, and strengths that have been put out of balance. Our different working schedules can be a source of conflict. Number seven, ask, don't assume. What is a maswali? Abana assume. Don't behave like a mind reader. Usi behave kama wei ni kwa nyumba yako. Ati mi naona vila unanipereka, unipereki vizuri. Sema kile ambacho, unasema kwa uwazi ama uliza maswali without assuming. Is that okay? Yeah. Those questions like, uh, nilikuwa na thania, nilikuwa na onelea, nilikuwa na wazia, forget about them. If you want to have a healthy relationship, hit everything uh, head on. Without, I was thinking, I was perceiving, I was imagining. How would you imagine about me in your head? Or how would you imagine about your spouse in your head? And judge their behavior out of your own imagination. And you know, if you have... Kamu kona pictures of farasi kwa kichwa. Have you ever discovered? If you have a mental image of horses in your head, when you look at the clouds, you see horses. Have you ever discovered? You see somebody saying, I'm seeing white horses, I'm seeing... And you call the others. They can't see the white horses. Why? The horses you are seeing are in your head that are being reflected on the clouds. And it's your own picture, your mental image. So whatever you have in your mind is what you reflect. So don't use what you have in your mind to uh, judge your friend. Lastly, connect before you correct. Connect before you correct. It doesn't matter your position, whether you're the husband, whether you're the wife. Correction works better when there is a relationship. And if you are purposing to correct, are you able first to look at the good things that have been done before you even do what? The co correct. If your habit is correcting throughout without appreciating any good thing, then what happens when you correct for a long time, your spouse shut up and raises a defense. Anytime you talk, they don't hear anything. You're talking to yourself. If you want to connect with your wife or your husband, make sure first you connect with them. Jesus Christ connected with a Samaritan woman first before he corrected her that she had several women back in the house. People go where they feel welcomed, but they stay where they feel valued. If you value your spouse, they will stick together with you. Kama unogopa ya kwamba your spouse may leave you. Are you able to work on yourself to be so much better uwezi wachika? So instead of managing her running away, or he's running away, are you able to work on yourself so that you become so valuable that you cannot be left? Number nine, uh, exercise the habit of forgiveness. Exercise the habit of Forgiveness. Let me say this. If you are normal, if your brain is working well, you will disagree. 
I hear a couple saying, as we don't argue, as we don't argue. Some, one of you is foolish. If you don't argue, there is something wrong. <laughs> there is something wrong with one of you. The difference is, how do you argue? What is the outcome of your argument? Are we together? You can maturely engage with one another in a proper way. And one of the things that I've discovered when it comes to forgiveness, bring your strategic thinking mind on the table when there is a conflict. Don't bring your hurting emotional brain on the table because you'll not be able to be objective, but you become very subjective in everything that you're discussing. And then you start playing victim. Unanionea. Why? If you use the brain that you use in the office uh, to plan on five years strategic plan on managing conflict in your own marriage, you will be surprised. Just as you get promotion in your company and as you succeed in the corporate world, your marriage will succeed because the principles are the same. It's only that we hide our heads under the carpet when we come into the house and engage a wounded brain than a strategic thinking brain. I'm welcoming each one of us to come with our strategic thinking brain in our marriages and let us engage with that brain. And let me tell you, it doesn't matter where the devil is taking the marriages, our marriages will stand. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Forgive your husband. Forgive your wife. I opened an account for my husband where I deposit forgiveness because we discovered to Takosana too. Because both of us are very sober. Both of us are very educated. Both of us are very productive in our own rights. And we know that as we stay together, there are things that we are going to disagree. But we have also made a decision at Wachani. So after kama kuna shidagani, we will talk and talk. Talk and talk again. If we don't agree, we will talk and talk again until we agree. If we are keeping quiet, we will keep quiet until we accumulate enough information that you cannot keep quiet but must share with your friend on what you have kept in your archive. Wow, we need to end. Unfortunately, that means uh, we have to organize another one. Do you want another one? All right, so let's stand because uh, it's late. Father, we thank you for every marriage here, every spouse, every partner. Lord, we pray that tonight, as we have heard your word, O oh Lord, I pray, Jehovah Lord, for every marriage that it will stand the test of times in the name of Jesus. Whichever season they may be in, Lord, I pray that you will help them to navigate and be able to continue staying together, Lord. I pray, Jehovah Lord, where they need to be a change of behavior, of character, that you will enable them, O oh Jehovah Lord. I pray, Jehovah Lord, to give them more grace, O oh Lord, for those who are feeling weary, Lord. I pray that you may give them more grace in the name of Jesus. I pray, Jehovah Lord, that they will forgive each other in the name of Jesus. Where they have hurt each other and they have hurt each other badly, Lord, I pray there will be forgiveness and there will be reunion once again in the name of Jesus. We pray for the peace, we pray for the joy in the marriages in the name of Jesus. May it be rekindled, O God. And may it not be just tonight, but it from tonight and onwards, O Lord, that, Lord, my Father, they will enjoy the bliss in the name of Jesus. I pray when there are tough times, they will be able to maneuver the hard times, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Therefore, this night, I speak a blessing over every family in the name of Jesus. I speak a blessing over every marriage in the name of Jesus. I declare that they will stand and not fall in the name of Jesus. They will continue to stay together till death do them apart in the name of Jesus. I pray that their marriage will continue to grow stronger and stronger in the name of Jesus. May you bless Bless them, may you cover them. May you bless the work of their hands, O oh God. I pray that, Lord, you bless their children. Bless them, O oh God, and watch over them. We thank you, Lord, and we bless your name. 
We thank you, Jehovah Lord, for the years that you have kept us. Others it is one, others it is two, others it's 13, others it's 15, others it's 29. Lord, we are grateful for the years that you have kept us. And for the remaining ones, Lord, you who began the good work in us, you are faithful to accomplish it, O oh God. Therefore, we put our trust in you and we put our hope in you. Our marriages, we put it. Oh, Lord, that you be at the center, Lord. Help us, oh, Lord. We thank you and we bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed and believed. Can we celebrate Jesus? Can we celebrate Jesus? Hallelujah. Amen.